uh, ASIS right there. And then PSIS right here. Spinal alignment. Go first down the spine, and if one, if more than one of the spinous processes was out of alignment, she would probably have scoliosis, but she doesn't. Uh, scapular position. I would pick for the inferior angle of the scapula and I would check and see if they're at the same height, which they are. All right, and now we're going to test the medial longitudinal arch of the homeopathy table. Stand up four to six inches apart. And then I would look at her Achilles and hers bow inwards, so she would have pes planus. And if they were to bow outwards, she would have pes, pes cavus. So now I'm going to have her lay back down prone on her stomach. Hold that. And I'm going to measure the root of the angle. So I'm going to do it full point in between the two lines, stationary on up. Mm -hmm. And hers looks to be at about six, which is in the normal limit of two to eight. And if she had greater supination, she'd have re rear foot barriers. And if she pronated, it would she would have rear foot valgus. Now I'm gonna go into tibial torsion, so I'm gonna have you flip over. Hers is at about 16, which is in the normal limit of 15 to 18. All right, and now we're going to go into muscle length assessment. So I'm going to do gastroc, so I'm going to have you flip over. So for that one, get off the edge of the table, stabilize, then I'm going to dorsiflex the foot. And then for that one, if she has less than 10 degrees of dorsiflexion, it may affect her walking. And if she has less than 15, it may affect her running. And tightness of the gastroc can cause overuse injuries in the foot, ankle, and knee. And now we're going to do the soleus. Dorsiflex again. And then for the soleus testing, the implications would be the same as they are for the gastroc. And now I'm going to do the hamstring. I'm going to have you flip over. And that one I'm going to put you in 90-90. And I'm going to stabilize. And then I'm going to extend the knee. And for that one, if she had less than 20 degrees of knee flexions, the tightness of her hamstring may affect her knee, thigh, hip, and spine. Then for rectus femoris, I'm going to have you flip over again. Stabilize the PSIS. And then I'm going to bring her ankle like that. And you would do it bilaterally. And if there's more than 10 degrees difference in knee flexion when compared bilaterally, the tightness of her rectus femoris may affect her knee, thigh, hip, and spine. Now we're going to test her Q angle, so we have you flip over again. That's a billionometer. And for that one, I'm going to put the fulcrum over her patella. The movement arm goes up to her ASIS, and this, or this movement arm, the stationary arm goes up towards her ASIS, and the movement arm goes towards her tibial tuberosity. And hers looks at like it's at about 
15, which for women is in the normal range of it being less than 18, and in men the Q angle should be less than 13, and if it's increased above that number for either a male or a female, they'll probably have patellar maltracking. And now we're gonna do the Craig's test. So I'm gonna have you flip over again. And then knee flex to 90. This one, I need to find your greater trochanter, which sticks out the most. So about right there. This go here. This would go straight up. This hers is about. 13, which means that she would have femoral retroversion because that's less than 15, and then femoral antroversion is when it's greater than 15. So now we're going to do the pelvic angle. So I'm going to have you stand up with your arms folded across your chest. So for that one, you just put the fulcrum over lateral to the PSIS, the stationary arm parallel to the floor, and then the movement arm position lateral to the ASIS. And then hers was at about six. So she would have a posterior pelvic tilt since it was less than eight in neutral position would be eight to 10, and then anterior would be greater than 10. All right, so for the next, we're gonna do scapular position. So you would stand. And then for this one, you would measure the distance from the T3 spinous process to the medial border of each scapula, and then the distance from the T7 spinous process to the inferior angle. And then the normal would be five to seven centimeters. And if the, there's an increased distance, it's a protractor, protracted scapula. A decreased distance is a retracted scapula. And if the lower measure, measurement is greater than the upper, it's an upwardly rotated scapula. So now we're gonna go back to muscle legs. So we're gonna do latissimus dorsi and teres and magus. So we're gonna be in a hook line position with your arms at your side. And for that one, you would uh, instruct them to move their arms above the shoulder like that. And for that one, her arm almost touches the table. So for that, <laughs> if the patient, so if she can't get her upper arm on the table or the, her spine lifts off the table, her latissimus dors dorsi and teres major are short. So next we're gonna do the pectoralis major. So you're gonna be in that same position. 
and you're gonna hook your arms behind your head and you're gonna try and put your elbows all the way down on the table hers go all the way down so that's normal if her but if her elbows were not to, to reach the table it would be um her tight pectoralis major muscle might create a rounded shoulder and forward head position so next we're going to do the pectoralis minor so you'd be in the same position and i'd still be up here by the head and i just put your arms at your sides and her her shoulders touch the table but if the posterior shoulder was not to touch the table it would be a tight pectoralis minor muscle that may create rounded shoulders and a forward head position and that is all